The goal of this experiment is to determine what each white solid is by using their physical and chemical properties. In other words, we will use physical properties such as solubility in water and chemical properties such as reactivity to figure out the identity of each salt labeled A through F. It is a good idea to organize your lab notebook before the lab by creating tables to insert your data. This allows you to focus on the actual experiment during the lab and also makes your data more clear for you to understand when you are doing your lab report. In this lab, it is helpful to be aware of some basic solubility rules. Salts with alkali metal ions and ammonium ions are soluble, as well as salts containing the nitrate ion and acetate. Salts containing carbonate, phosphate, the sulfide ion, or hydroxides are insoluble unless they are with alkali metal ions or ammonium ions. In this experiment, first you will try to dissolve all the solids in water. After this test, you can divide all your samples into two categories, water soluble and water insoluble. Before you begin your experiment, make sure you wash out all your equipment. Otherwise, during the middle of your experiment, an unwanted reaction may occur. Then you'll have to start all over, and nobody wants to do that. When trying to dissolve the substances in water, make sure not to put too much of the solid in the test tube. This will result in a hard white clump at the bottom of the test tube that is hard to break up. Even though the substance might be soluble, it is hard to tell because we have this huge white clump of white solid. In this case, you'll have to break it up and it will take a long time. This is the appropriate amount of substance in the test tube and this is way too much. Also. If a solid does not immediately dissolve, keep stirring it. Some of the solids take longer to dissolve than others. After this first test, we will have two clear categories. Water soluble, the completely clear liquid, and water insoluble, which will result in a cloudy liquid. In the next part of the experiment, you will be using precipitation reactions to determine the identity of the water soluble substances. By adding a test solution, we can observe if a precipitate forms in the solution with the unknown salt. The presence of a precipitate will reveal the identity of the salt because only certain combinations of a test solution and the water-soluble compound will form a precipitate. When performing the reaction to see if a solid precipitates, make sure to have a good amount of the unknown solid in the solution. If you do not have enough of the unknown solid, the precipitation reaction will be too small to observe, and you will not record accurate observations. When performing the test to see if a precipitate forms in the water-soluble compounds, be sure to use the deionized water. The minerals in the regular water will cause a precipitate to form regardless of the test solution. This will give you false data and will make it hard to do your lab report. If, after adding your test solution, you get a cloudy substance, make sure to stir the solution. Sometimes the cloud will go away, which means the precipitate did not form because the solids dissolved again. However, if the substance remains cloudy, you can accurately say that the precipitate formed. During the next test, you will determine if the water insoluble compounds are acid soluble. This test is similar to the test for water solubility, but instead of water, you will use hydrochloric acid. Be sure to record your observations. Things like fizzing, color change can be extremely helpful when determining the identity of the compound. Keep in mind that fizzing is actually a gas evolution reaction. This can be helpful in determining the identity of the unknown salt because only certain compounds release a gas when dissolved in hydrochloric acid. After determining if the salt is acid soluble, you will perform a series of precipitation reactions as you did with the water-soluble salts. However, for the acid-soluble salts, only two test solutions are used. In this lab, you will collect all of your wastes in a 400 milliliter beaker. The wastes include solids in your test tube, the just test solutions. After dumping out your solutions into the 400 milliliter waste beaker, Rinse each test tube with a small amount of deionized water and pour into the waste beaker. After collecting all your waste in your waste beaker, be sure to dispose of it into the heavy metals waste container. All experiments have their errors, and this experiment is no different. However, 
By using the solubility rules and by determining possible products from the precipitation reactions, you can check the validity of your observations. Consider the reaction between barium chloride and sodium sulfate. By mixing up the ions, we know that the resulting compounds would be sodium chloride and barium sulfate. Using the solubility rules, we know that barium sulfate is insoluble in water and should precipitate out. However, let's say there was not enough of the substance originally in the solution, and the precipitation went unobserved because it was too small. Then, though you did not observe a precipitate in the experiment, you can still determine if a precipitation reaction occurred, and discuss this in your conclusion. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.